today's webinar is entitled Forms of Business Organization. Now, simply for the act of using raw materials, natural resources, and to achieve to for a particular purpose, for that we need a form of business organization. Now, there are many forms of business organizations which have its own set of advantages and disadvantages, as well as are subject to different regulatory requirements. Now, the most popular ones that are used are sole proprietorship, partnership, trusts, cooperative society, corporations, limited liability companies, and ex as well as foundation exempt organizations. Now, the first one that we're going to take is a sole proprietorship. Now, sole proprietorship is a is an organization which is run only by one person. Uh, it the, that one person provides the capital required for running the business, bears all the risk and looks after the entire management and control of the enterprise. Now, as far as the advantages are concerned, uh, it is very easy to form. Uh, it is, uh, there are no interference, right? It is wholly by, owned by an individual. But what happens in this case is that the legal liability of the owner as well as the organization is not separate. The ownership and the management is vested in a single individual. And if the organization suffers a loss, then the personal liability of the proprietor can uh, also be called it and then generally the scale of operation is generally very small. Now the, that leads to a certain disadvantage simply because uh, that uh, in terms of the resources required right, uh, that becomes very less because only one owner is uh, using that organization. So the access to resources that he can actually have is going to be limited. Uh, it is also smaller in size and it is otherwise also very uh, you know, uh, difficult to uh, take funds from the market. However, because of its small size, it can adapt itself easier, be possible to have quick decisions, easy to start and dissolve. Right? It is flexible in operations. Right? And uh, secondly, because in the fact that it is, you know, it is an entrepreneurial virtue, so from that point of view, it has certain amount of social uh, utility. Uh, but the disadvantage is, as I said, one is of course in terms of lack of capital. Uh, there is lack of specialization because only one owner is involved, so you cannot diversify business, you cannot take the business beyond a certain point of time. And should the uh, death of the proprietor happen, uh, especially if it is uh, uncertain in the sense that it is, uh, all of a sudden it happens, then the business might come to an end if there is no successor of the proprietor. Uh, now, in terms of, there is another form of business organization which is called partnership and is usually owned by professionals in the sense like a child accountancy firm or a lawyer's firm. Right? So, in that case, you would have a relation between two parties and, uh, and there is a particular partnership deed which is, and they, uh, it is supposed to be registered and uh, in that, they, it is something like, you know, there is a, an agreement that they will carry on a lawful business right? and it is governed under the Indian Partnership Act 1932 section 4. Uh, now, uh, in this case, in a partnership, right, uh, each of the partners is, has a right to take part in the conduct of the business. Right? The partner is supposed to attend diligently to his duties. Uh, each partner is allowed to have access and inspect the copies of the books of the firm. In the event of the death of the partner, the heirs or the legal representatives of the uh, agents shall have a right to access to and inspect a copy of the books of the firm. Uh, he is not in a partnership because in the sense that uh, since they are only liable to have the profits of the partnership so therefore they cannot take any extra remuneration for uh, working in the firm. So whatever is a part, uh, profit, is, it is all equally divided among the partners depending on their share of presentation. If of course they have contributed a certain amount of capital over and above then in that case they may be uh, you know, allowed to receive certain amount of uh, interest on that. Uh, if there is some loss that is happening on account of a partner, then the partner has to indemnify the firm for any loss caused by, by his willful neglect. Now, uh, again, there are some uh, advantages and disadvantages. Now, relative to a sole proprietorship, uh, it is slightly more difficult, but still, uh, one is, it is still easy to establish because it is by more than one person. Therefore, the ability to raise funds, uh, you know, uh, increases because if you have four or five partners. So in that case, the ability to raise funds can, is obviously uh, increased. The workload can be uh, divided, right? and if there are some employees uh, who you feel that you know can be an asset to the organization, so one can involve them in the business, and they can be made partners. 
secondly because each partner brings his or her skills so to that extent a diversification of skills happens so uh, technically the uh, firm is uh, more ad advantages to keep trends in the uh, abreast of the trends in the market however disadvantages is that because again by the form of its organization again it is limited in size so to that extent there is a limited amount of funds that one can raise if there is a death of one partner then in that case the partnership needs to be dissolved uh disagreements can be common in terms of working and therefore that again leads to the uh, you know if there is a disagreement between one partner then again the one partner decides to opt out so then a fresh partnership deal has to be uh, made so in that case again uh, the partnership has a limited uh, appro uh, limited life the withdrawal of a capital from a partner needs approval from other partners and right? and again uh, but it is not uh, again like a uh, sole proprietorship the legal entity is very much uh, uh, equivalent to its owners that means it does not have a legal entity which is different from its owners uh, in all these uh, then there is a partnership deed that is required and the partnership deed will uh, usually contain the following clauses name of the firm nature of the firm's business the principal place of business duration of partnership name and address of the partners amount of capital to be contributed by each partner the profit sharing ratio amount of salary or commission payable to partners mode of valuation of goodwill procedure for admission retirement etc of each partner procedure for maintaining accounts and getting them audited uh the another form of business organization is called the trust now um, trust can be both private or uh, public Uh, a public charitable trust is basically uh, in terms of something that must have its an objective in terms of some public good and uh, obviously the tax implications of a, a public charitable trust is different from a private charitable uh, trust basically a trust is agreement where the money or assets are held and managed by one person for the benefit of the other uh, all trusts in india come under the indian trust act 1882 uh in terms of the benefits right it is provides certain safeguards for family and other beneficiaries uh postpones or avoids unnecessary taxes and it means it establishes a means for controlling or administrating uh property now uh basically in terms of the, you know when you have a trust it is very uh, the basic requirement of a uh, trust is that one there must be a trust agreement and secondly there must be a uh, a single trustee or a group of trustees now they will obviously be certain duties and liabilities of the trustees now the first and foremost duty of the trustee is to execute a trust to protect the title to trust property uh, not to set up title adverse to beneficiary conversion of per perishable property to prevent waste the trustee is also bound to keep the uh, accurate and clear accounts of the trust property at at all times uh, whenever the beneficiary requires they should uh, furnish full and accurate information as may be required with regard to the uh, nature of the trust property right now the trustee uh, cannot renounce the trusteeship after he has accepted unless of course he does it only with the permission of a civil court or a uh, of original jurisdiction if by that time the beneficiary is competent to contract with his consent and if there is a special uh, par in terms of the instrument which is written in that case he can uh, renounce it right secondly uh, the trustee cannot use the property for his own benefit he cannot act singly if there are more than one trustee then one single trustee cannot act in his uh, own capacity then in that case uh, it has to be a joint agreement uh, he or she cannot on uh, buy and sell property unless uh, again there is an agreement and he is not supposed to charge for services unless whatever is uh, stated in the trust deed right as far as the beneficiary is concerned uh, the rights and liabilities of the beneficiary include right to earn rent and profits right to specific execution right to transfer of possession right to transfer beneficial interest and right to sue for execution of trust uh now uh, like a trust uh, now there is another form of organization which is called a cooperative society now a cooperative society basically uh, is intended uh, to have a organization of people who have limited means who decide to voluntarily join together to achieve a certain economic uh, ends uh, now basically uh, the cooperative societies are only you know basically through you know uh, of limited means or uh, for uh, achieving some uh, common purposes which cannot be achieved by a single person now uh, 
there is a registrar of companies and uh, the, uh, our, it is supposed to be registered with the registrar companies and again there are some requirements with regard to uh, in terms of uh, balance sheet income statement and there are formats for uh, that and they are supposed to duly keep records and uh, papers and documentation as far as the working of the cooperative society. Uh, it is a voluntary organization, so as and when people would like to join and quit, and they are absolutely free to do it. Uh, are, all the members have a common objective, right? Uh, it has a legal entity which is different from that of its owners. There is limited liability, so to that extent, that whoever is cooperating towards a cooperative society, so their liability is only limited to the amount of capital that they have contributed. And uh, it is normally a democratic society, so uh, people generally you know, sit together and then elect uh, the representatives, but uh, the management is only controlled by uh, the, all the members and uh, this form of society you can find in, uh, for example, in cooperative banks, cooperative societies, so you will find, uh, and for example, certain housing societies as well, they are all formed by cooperatives. Then there is another form of organization which are called professional associations and memberships. Now, for example, you have a medical association, you have FBSP, you have uh, association of mutual funds, you may have self-regulatory organization. Now, these are basically professional memberships of organizations which come together to basically promote the interest of the uh, profession or the you know which have self-interest of the entire organizations that are part of the members. So you may have an association of universities. And that. so uh, they have a form of organization uh, which is in terms of you know uh, uh, basically the purpose is to disseminate knowledge and information and uh, uh, provide uh, a base and a foundation by the by that uh, the entire interests of the in members can be put together as one platform. Now normally in terms of such uh, associations and foundations you know, there will be uh, certain tax implications in terms of forms of uh, the way the balance sheet and income statement has to be submitted. So they are required to uh, keep certain amount of accounts. Now the tax exemptions uh, will differ in terms of the kind of organization uh, that one has. For example, in the United States you may have an S corporation uh, and, a, and a C corporation. Uh, India would have its own uh, requirements with regard to how much is tax and how much is tax exempt. So depending on the nature of the organization, there will be certain rules and 